Hey, Patrick Foran here with Foran Realty. We have been on a crazy real estate ride the last two years and things are changing. The question is, where is it all headed? Buyers are asking, should I buy? Sellers are asking, should I sell? The answer to both of these questions is yes. I recently connected with Amy Downey from Radius Financial to talk more about the craziness in this rapidly changing real estate market. Please take a listen to the following podcast and let me know your thoughts. Hi, Patrick Foran here from Foreign Realty, and I'm excited to be joined today by Amy Downey, who's a loan officer, mortgage broker with Radius Financial Group. Amy, thanks for coming in. You're welcome, Pat. I love doing these types of things with you. We seem to do them once in a while, which is great, kind of keep everyone up to date on what's yep. going on in the market out there because there's so many changes. Exactly. And, you know, it's been a wild couple of years. And the last couple of months have really been crazy with the interest rates changing. And I, I thought it would be a good time just to have a conversation about where our rates are at, where they were, where they're at, and what's your crystal ball say about maybe where they're going. Uh, and then we can talk about just the overall market. So if somebody were to come to you today, uh, what are we at, June 20th, what kind of rate do you have? Well, it depends on the person. It all, um, rates are... Uh, are... They all, they all depend on um, how much they're going to put down. So if it's 20%, 10%, um, if, some t- if somebody puts down 50%, they're going to get a better rate because they're less risk to the bank. It also mm-hmm. depends on the product. Um, so if it's a if it's a first-time home buyer, they tend to get a little bit better rates. Um, mm-hmm. If it's a primary residence or second or investment, those rates are going to be a little bit higher. Um, so we, it all depends on what product they go in. Um, typically right now, a conventional loan with good credit and a nice down payment of at least 20% is hitting about a 6% rate. They okay. went up a little bit again last week with the market going a little crazy. Mm-hmm. And what people don't realize it's not just the prime index rate. When the government meets and does that, that usually affects car loans and credit cards and home equities. It does affect us a little bit too, but we're um, mainly adjusted to the bond market. So whatever the bond market does, that affects your mortgage rates. Um, but 6% is about what they were. They are right now. They were probably about five and a half, about 10 days ago. Okay. And that same person that would be at 6% today, looking backwards in time, three months ago, might have been at? If it was January, they probably would have been at 2.875, 3%, okay. maybe 3.1. So, And that's on a 30-year fixed. Yes, 30-year fixed. And it's, it's, it's hard to, to imagine that at 6% it's still relatively cheap when you look back at history. Um, you, I graduated from college. I bought my first condo. I think I was seven, seven and a half percent back right around 1999, 2000. Um, I have talked to my parents and, you know, back in the eighties, there were rates that were in the teens. Um, yeah, 17, 16%. My first loan was nine and a half. And yeah. that was um, back in 1990. And then mm-hmm. I refinanced thinking I was getting a great deal because I paid two points to get six and a half. So, and then they kept dropping and dropping and dropping. That's why some lenders uh, favor um, the arms, adjustable Mm -hmm. mortgages, because the average person refinances every five or six years or moves. So sometimes an arm is the way to go, especially in this type of market. You tend to get a little bit better rate and it's locked in Mm -hmm. according to what the rate is and what the term is on that. So what, just say you have a 5-1 arm, that means it's fixed for five years at whatever that opening rate is, and then it can adjust every year after. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's what the 5-1 means. It can be like a 5-6 month, which means fixed for five years and then adjusts every six months. But sometimes those rates tend to be a little better and we can get a little better pricing on them, especially in this type of market. When the 30-year fix was at 2.875 or two and a half, depending upon product, then you're looking at a 30-year. It's not a bad deal um, because you're going to have such a great rate, you'll never have to refinance um, and ever worry about it again. So I think what you're going to see is um, prices are going to eventually start to roll down a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, inventory, as you know, is starting to 
come up. I think people see with inflation and the way the stock market's been acting that um, the rates um, are going to affect what people are paying for houses. So eventually it's going to make the housing market drop a little bit because everything kind of balances itself out. So whether you were getting 2.875 six months ago, um, you were paying a higher price on the house. If the houses the prices go down and you have a higher rate, sometimes you end end up paying pretty much around the same amount. Right. Yeah. Good point. Now I looked uh, right before we get on the call. Barnstable County for mm -hmm. active single family homes were just shy of five hundred um, as of today, That's which right. is not a bad number. But if we go back in time five years, we mm -hmm. were around twenty seven, twenty eight hundred active homes. So we have a long way to go. We still have an inventory shortage. But as you said, I think the tide is starting to change. I think we're going to see uh, more houses come on the market. Um, we still have a long way to go before we come to a, what they consider a balanced market uh, in terms of housing inventory. Um, but as long as the demand is still there, the prices are still going to be up. I don't foresee any kind of crash. Um, I certainly see an adjustment in the future. <laughs> So if somebody were to think about listing their home for sale, now is the time that I would probably advise them to do mm -hmm. it, as long as they have a plan as to where they're going. On the flip side, if somebody is a buyer, you know, yes, the interest rates have gone up, but now's the time to lock in that house that you've been looking at because my crystal ball is telling me the interest rates are going to continue to yeah. climb. Um, I don't know what your experts you know, are, are telling you. And That's what they're saying, too. They feel that interest rates will be at least in the sixes by the end of the year. Yeah. And, you know, people that are younger don't remember what rates were, but 6% or 6.5% was not a bad rate. The funny thing about it, though, is, and it's not really that funny, but is savings rates haven't gone up. And it used to be back in the day when you had like a 7% mortgage, you were getting 6% on a money market in the banks. Mm -hmm. And that pot hasn't hit yet. So here we have interest rates climbing on our lending side, but on our savings side, as you know, the mar stock market's been going down, but right. savings rates within banks are not going up. And some banks import lending. So, excuse me? Has that happened before? As you say, I've usually... never known it to happen. Right. Usually they, they kind of fall with each other. You know, if, yeah. if mortgage rates go up, then usually the savings rates in the banks tend to go up too. But they also have um, a lot of people are doing portfolio, which is within the bank, they lend against deposits, but they can all, it used to be unlimited what they could lend. Now there's a cap on, according to their deposit base, what they can lend. So, um, eventually the smaller banks are going to hit their cap. So they don't want to use up all their, it's like put all your eggs in one basket. They don't want to use all their portfolio lending on just anyone that walks through the door. So they're going to get a little bit picky on that as well, where, you know, it used to be that you'd have to have 500,000 in their bank for them to portfolio a loan for you, or they mm -hmm. may, you may see that come up again where they wouldn't help like a first time home buyer. Not saying it's going to, but I think you may see some of that happening. So I think it was safe to say the banks are, are tightening their belts on lending guidelines as well. Yes, well that came about with the SAFE Act. So yeah. I think the way the government looked at it is if they gave them unlimited lending capability on deposits, if they lent on all their deposits and then we had a crash and everyone went into foreclosure, the banks would be in trouble and the government would have to come in and right. save them again, and they don't want to do that. So they've had they have all these safety nets um, where um, they try to protect themselves because they know if it comes down to it, they're the ones that are going to have to. Fannie and Freddie are going to have to reach in and start helping people out again. Right. So let's talk if we can just for a minute about first time home buyers. What What's your advice to somebody who's a first time home buyer in this in this market? The market's a little scary for the first time home buyers because they tend not to be able to put as much money down. So their offers don't look as attractive as somebody say 50% down. Right. Um, but the nice part about being a first time home buyers is you're opening like the crystal ball of all different 
types of lending products. So you can get on the Cape. I think the limit is if you have income of 71,000, some people, if it's a husband and wife, will put just one person on the loan to keep it under the 71 and you can get home ready home possible. And what mm -hmm. that does is it gives you a discount on not only your rate, but your mortgage insurance. Um, you have FHA, which is three and a half percent down, but it gives you a discount on rate. Of course, you have mortgage insurance and they also have a funding fee. But in some cases, that works out really well for people. Um, again, you have USDA. Um, they have a one percent funding fee and their MI mortgage insurance is 0.35 percent per month. And um it's 100% financing. So if you can get in that, you, the discount on that rate is really good. Just to give you an idea, I did a refinance on USDA last year, about mm -hmm. I think this time last year, and I got two and a quarter for 30 years on a refinance. Wow. So I would say you might be able to get in the USDA or the home ready market. You, in FHA, you may be in the fives. Wow. And in some cases, maybe in the low fives, it depends. Yeah. So I think it is a good time for them to buy. No, I agree. Um, I just wanted to get your expert opinion um, from from the lending from the lending side. Amy, mm -hmm. and I, you've done a lot of deals together, and uh, it's always a pleasure working with you. So, with the cost of living just going through the roof, I know we advise people don't go out and buy a new car. Don't Correct. buy furniture get through the closing, there's employment verification, um, employment verification, um, they run credit checks, everything sometimes a day or two before closing. Uh, any, other, any other tips uh, that you might wanna you know, throw out there to, to somebody who's going through the process of a don't do? Yeah. Well, one thing you can do too, is if you think about it with, with the housing market down here and how high the rates are and how hard it is to find, you know, um, a rental, they have to come up with first, last and security. So they could look at that security deposit in that last month as maybe helping with their down payment. But you definitely don't want to lease a car for one thing, um, because if you, at least if you own the car and you have, you can bring a payment down, make a large, if you have the money, can make a large down payment and bring that payment down to 10 payments. And we don't count that in the debt to income ratio. But if it's a lease, we do, because you have to have a car. And if you turn in a lease, you have to buy another car. So right. that's the way they look at that. But huh. as far as credit cards, um, if you're getting ready to buy and you want to have good credit, you want to keep your limits down because you go over 33%, your credit score is going to drop. You go over 50%, it's going to drop even more. Uh, don't close any credit cards. So if you can... Try not to use them. If you use them, pay them off every month, that type of thing. But um, you are right. We've had people that two days before the closing have gone out and to Bob's and bought furniture for the house because they're moving in two days and have been told now you don't qualify anymore. Right. So you need to, we have, they've had to return their furniture. Um, we have, um, a company called Credit Plus that works with the credit bureaus and us. And anytime new credit is opened, they're notified and they notify us right up until the closing. So people need to be aware if you're taking out any new credit, they're going to find out about it. Yeah. And they find out things like even if you're on the deed to a house, but it's your parents' house. Mm -hmm. So be careful um, if you're co-signing. We have a lot of people that co sign um, If you have student loans and the kids are still in school, we're going to hit you for that 1% payment. And we're going to have to, even though you say it's your sons and they're going to pay it, unless that person has paid that student loan for one year, we're going to hit them with the 1% payment. So, you know, that can really kill someone on that debt to income. But yeah. once the students are out and they can show that they've been paying it for a year, we get 12 months of statements or cancel checks, but usually it's statements because every youngster does the online banking. They don't yeah. write checks. <laughs> so, 
we um, have to get 12 months of statements to show someone else is making that payment. The same goes with a car. If you co-sign a car for say your son or your daughter, that's going to affect your debt to income unless they've been making that payment for one year. Hmm. And it goes for non-occupant co-borrowers that co-sign a loan for someone. And now you, you want to go, the parent wants to go and buy a second home. They may not qualify unless they, um, that that son or that daughter has been making that mortgage payment for a year. Wow, all good things that I, I wasn't aware of. That, that, mm -hmm. uh, we we generally tell people don't spend any money on anything you don't need to survive until you're through the closing. Correct. And if you have money at home, it needs to go in the bank because they do verification of deposits, and it can't be more than twenty five percent of your income. So if you make a, any type of large deposit, the underwriter is going to question it. If you say, well, it's cash I had at home, you can't use it anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot. Another one to bring up is UTMA accounts, um, yeah. Miners Act um, in Massachusetts, where parents set up savings accounts for their mm -hmm. children and their children's social security number. And it's yeah. supposed in benefit for the children. So when they turn 18, it becomes their money. So I have had two instances where people have put their money that they're using for a down payment in these accounts. And then they go to transfer it over to use it. And they can't because it's really the child's money. It's under the child's social security number. The child's under 18 and can't sign a contract. So the child can't gift you the money. <laughs> So that's another one is wow. make sure it's in your name and it's in a bank. If it's, if it's a joint account and the other person isn't on the loan with you, they have to sign a letter giving you permission to use the money. So just think of that, Pat, when you go to buy a new house. <laughs> yeah, lots of little things to think about. And, and, and you know, then that's one of the nice things when people work with you, you can kind of guide them on, don't do this, don't do that. And, um, you know, answer questions that they have because I'm sure, just like me, you could write a book. Um, oh, probably yeah. bestseller on the New York Times uh, bestseller list. Well, one so, thing too is I used to manage banks, so I have right. both. I see both sides of everything. I have people when they need to verify, um, they get two months of bank statements. Then they have to get, they're all of a sudden the deposit checks go in, and they have to get the statement well print out from the last statement and there's a way to do yes. it and you have to stamp have it stamped and signed i usually just say call me when you get to the bank and i'll explain to the teller what you need done because <laughs> i know the lingo so yes. it works out pretty well but great yeah yeah all right well i think it's going to be a very interesting next six to 12 months uh, mm -hmm. both in the real estate market and in the lending lending area as well um, Amy, how does somebody get in touch with you if they wanted to talk to you about finance? If, um, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, one is you can um, email me at adowney at radiusgrp.com, or they can reach me on my cell phone, 508-648-9422. And the cell phone is all I use. I don't use the office um, line. So it, I, as you know, answer my phone on the weekends and at night yep. too. And, and you come to people. I mean, it's great. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go somewhere. You come to them, which is also nice. Yep. So, um, and I do have an office here on the Cape, too, if yeah. they do want to meet in person. So that's not a problem either. Right. So, no, you're great to work with. And I highly recommend everybody give you a shout and Thank have you. one of those confidential conversations to see what they can mm -hmm. afford. Exactly. And I think you're going to see um, a lot more first-time homebuyers in this market in a year from now. I think that when um, the rates go up a little and the housing market comes down a little, it's going to open things up more for those people uh, mm -hmm. that weren't able to purchase during this time because they did they couldn't go a hundred thousand over asking. Um, right. you know, they go out and they they get a house and if they get the offer and it's fifty thousand over asking and it doesn't appraise for that, they have to come up with that difference. So uh, most first time home buyers don't have that. Right. Exactly. But that's what, I mean, if, if you're renting right now in this market, I'm on a Cape Cod rental website and I saw someone put in, I can afford up to 6,000 a month. Well, if you can afford 6,000 a month, you might want to get a mortgage. Right. 
I mean, most rents down here are at least 2000 You can find something if you go to a condo and it's, you know, it's not going to have all the bells and whistles. And that's what I tell my first time home buyers is sometimes you have to start out with a condo. Yeah. But if you're paying under 2000 a month, no one's going to evict you unless you don't make your mortgage payment. And sometimes you can have pets, you know, so right. it's kind of nice. It's that having that security again. Yeah. And that's what I did. I started out with a condo and then I'm mm -hmm. on my third house at this point since I graduated college. So um, my kids have told me that uh, we're not moving anywhere. So that's why I'm I've been where I am for 31 years. <laughs> my daughter right. told me I could never sell the house. <laughs> So, that's a bit right. funny how the kids own the houses now <laughs> it, it is it is so amy <laughs> pleasure as always thank you very much all right so it was nice forward. talking with you all right thank you anyone can reach out with any questions you know that even anyone in your office okay uh, thank you all right have a nice day you too bye-bye foreign realty provides residential and commercial sales vacation rental management property management and licensed house watching services to our valued customers throughout Cape Cod. If you're interested in any of these services, we'd love to talk to you. After all, we love the Cape and show it. We can be reached at 508-385-1355. We look forward to hearing from you.